High Speed 2 HS2 is a proposed high speed line in the United Kingdom, the first stage of which is under construction. When completed, the new line will run from the southernmost point in London, via Coles Hill, east of Birmingham, to the northernmost point in Manchester. A crossing at Coles Hill takes HS2 northeast to the East Midlands. HS2 will be the second purpose built high speed line in the country, the first being High Speed 1, the link from London to the Channel Tunnel. At its southern end, the line terminates at London Euston Station, while other terminals are in the Midlands in Birmingham and the northwest of England in Manchester. In addition to these stations, special routes will serve Old Oak Common in West London, Birmingham Interchange, East Midlands Parkway south of Nottingham, Crewe and Manchester Airport. Let's take a look at the most expensive railway megaproject in the world. Connecting Lines there will be several intersections where trains can cross the existing West Coast Main Line and Midland Main Line to reach other cities in Scotland, Northwest and Northeast England, as well as the West and East Midlands that are not served by the new high speed rail. The HS2 will have two classes of trains capable of operating at a line speed of 400 km per hour. One class is dedicated to HS2 routes, and the other operates an existing HS2 routes and conventional routes, covering locations outside of HS2 lines with a combination of HS2 or conventional network services. Using a combination of high-speed and conventional rail, cities outside the high-speed backbone are served by the latter type of rail. The project is in three stages. Phase 1, under construction, will run from London to the intersection with the West Coast Main Line at Litchfield with a branch to Birmingham. Construction of the line begins in 2020 and tunnelling for Phase 1 under Chiltern Hills outside London in 2021. Phase 2A from Litchfield to a further junction with the West Coast Main Line at Crewe receives a royal assent. Full construction but pending completion just commences Phase 2B from Crewe to Manchester and the West Coast Main Line connection at Crewe will require parliamentary approval to allow trains to continue to Scotland and from the West Midlands to the East Midlands Parkway where HS2 joins the Midlands. Conventional Railway. The project received approval and rejection. Project proponents believe that the additional capacity and reliability of the HS2 will ensure an increase in passenger numbers before COVID while spurring further model shift to rail. In response to criticism, the government ordered a review of the project in 2019, led by former project chairman Douglas Okervey, who recommended the full project go ahead as planned. However, the Northern and the Midlands Integrated Rail Plan, published in November 2021, cancelled the project, as did the Integrated Northern Powerhouse Rail Project. Background High Speed Rail arrived in the United Kingdom with the opening in 2003 for the first part of High Speed 1, then known as the 67-mile-long Channel Tunnel Rail Link between London and the Channel Tunnel. A Phase 2A High Speed Rail Bill seeking the power to construct Phase 2 as far as crew and make the decisions on the remainder of Phase 2B route was introduced in July 2017. The HS2 train will operate between London and Birmingham on a dedicated 134-mile line. You will pass through 31 miles of tunnels and more than 10 miles of viaducts. Once operational, HS2 will serve more than 25 stations, connecting around 30 million people. Water Orton number for one and two viaducts are two long single girder concrete bridges that carry the high speed line, two over important major transport links, and the River Tame and its floodplain. The bridge has pre stressed segmental slabs of precast concrete supported on concrete pillars and supports with driven foundations. The Birmingham and Fazerley Canal Viaduct is a five-span composite structure consisting of three deck sections with a total length of 235 meters. The superstructure consists of a composite deck of welded steel double I-beams and prefabricated cast-in-place reinforced concrete deck members. Rail Plan On November 18, 2021, the government's pending integrated train plan was published. The plan significantly impacted parts of the HS2 program, including cutting off large parts of the east. Under the initial proposal for the East, a high-speed line would be built south of York with a link to the East Coast Main Line to allow trains to continue to Newcastle. A branch takes the train to Leeds. There will also be a branch to the Midland Main Line north of Derby to continue trains to Sheffield. Initial plans also included a through the station at Totten between Nottingham and Derby. The eastern portion of HS2 was largely removed, leaving a branch from Coles Hill near Birmingham to East Midlands Parkway Station south of Nottingham and Derby, where the HS2 route terminates and trains head north to the Midland Main Line to serve stations in Nottingham, Derby, Chesterfield and Sheffield. The HS2 train will serve the centre of Nottingham and Derby, unlike previous proposals. 
An upgrade has been proposed for the East Coast Main Line to increase times on the London to Leeds and Newcastle routes. Services from Birmingham to Leeds and Newcastle are still planned using the rest of the eastern half of HS2. The London to Sheffield service will remain on the Midland Main Line and will follow the originally proposed HS2 travel time. The integrated rail plan has proposed a study to determine the best route for the HS2 train to reach Leeds. The plan scrapped a previously proposed HS2 service from London to Runcon with Warrington added to the route. Liverpool's HS2 train reaches Warrington via HS2 and Northern Powerhouse Rail before reaching Liverpool on an upgraded cargo line. Travel time on the Liverpool to London route will be reduced by two minutes. In addition to the integrated railroad plan, the Goldbone spur was removed from Crewe to Manchester Bill in June 2022. Without this line, trains to Scotland would join the West Coast Main Line, which is further south in Crewe than it is south of Wigan. The Department of Transport said the government was considering recommendations from the Union Connectivity Review, which is considering alternatives such as the more northerly HS2 line to the West Coast Main Line from Goulburn and the modernisation of the West Coast Main Line from Crewe to Preston. The Ministry of Transportation will publish its response according to the funds allocated in the Integrated Railway Plan. Route Branches of the HS2 High Speed Main Line and HS2 Northern Powerhouse Rail Shared Line are at Cold Hill, east of Birmingham, west to Birmingham Curzon Street. Cold Hill, east of Birmingham, east to the East Midlands Parkway, where the HS2 route branches to the Midland Main Line. Main Line from Litchfield to West Coast. This branch will be used after Phase 1 for all trains travelling not from Litchfield, but after Phase 2A, it will only be used for trains stopping at Stafford, Stoke-on-Trent and Macclesfield. It is used for the HS2 trains running north from the centre of Crewe and also from the north to the centre. It is used for HS2 trains running south from the centre of Crewe and also from the south to the centre. Millington Junction by HS2 shared track east to Manchester. Millington Junction with Northern Powerhouse Rail shares a westbound line to Warrington. There are two main four-way high-speed crossings on the line at Cold Hill east of Birmingham and Millington between Warrington and Manchester. The two intersections of the railway project are north, south, east and west. The hub in Crewe, the Crewe hub, is primarily a conventional rail hub with stations capable of serving high-speed trains centrally at the hub. To the north and the south of the intersection, there will be road access from the HS2 high-speed line. High-speed trains can pass through intersections using high-speed lines through north-south-oriented tunnels drilled under stations and intersections. Construction. The main construction phase officially started on 4th September 2020 after previous delays. The civil aspect of phase 1 construction cost around £6.6 .6 billion, with preparations involving more than 8,000 drill holes for ground exploration. Euston Station in London. In October 2018, demolition of the former carriage house at Euston Station began. This will allow construction to begin at the mouth of the station on the Mornington Street Bridge at an 8-mile double-barreled tunnel to West Ruislip. The Euston taxi stand was moved to a temporary location in front of the station in January 2019 to allow demolition of the 1 Euston Square and Grand Thornton House blocks to begin. The demolition period is set at 10 months. In June 2020, workers completed the demolition of the road and guardrails of the western part of the station. In this part of the station, there is a parcel depot, which is no longer in use after parcel traffic was diverted to the road. Chiltern Tunnels As of July 2020, the 17-metre-high wall work on the south portal of the double-barreled tunnel was completed. The 16-kilometre-long Chiltern Tunnel will take three years to excavate with two 2,000-ton tunnel drilling machines. Colney Valley Viaduct The Colney Valley Viaduct is a 2.1-mile-long bridge under construction to carry high-speed rail across Colney Valley Regional Park in Hillingdon, West London. The bridge is located between the Northall Tunnel, which carries the HS2 from Old Oak Common Station to Ruislip on the outskirts of London, and the Chiltern Tunnel. The bridge construction machinery was launched in June 2022. Impact and Environment The government announced in January 2011 that 2 million trees will be planted along sections of the route to mitigate the visual impact. The proposals include a realignment of more than 1 km of the River Tame and construction of the 0.63 km viaduct and a cutting through ancient woodland at a natural reserve at Park Hall near Birmingham. The environmental statement for Phase 1 estimates that emissions of 5.8 to 6.2 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent will be involved in the construction of this section of the pipeline, with subsequent pipeline operations assessed as carbon negative. 
operational emissions, mode changes and other environmental measures such as tree planting and decarbonizing the power grid are expected to save 3 million tons of CO2 equivalent emissions over 60 years of operation. Carbon dioxide emissions per passenger kilometer in 2030 are estimated at 8 grams for high-speed rail, compared to 22 grams for conventional long-distance transport, 67 grams for private road transport and 170 grams for domestic air transport. The government says a third of the carbon footprint of the first phase of construction comes from tunnels, the number of which has been increased at the request of residents to reduce the impact of the railroads on habitat and visual impact. The government says a third of the carbon footprint of the first phase of construction comes from tunnels, the number of which has been increased. HS2 Limited says 21,300 homes would experience a significant increase in rail noise and that 200 non-residential buildings within 300 meters of the selected route could potentially experience significant noise pollution. The government has announced that planting trees as visual barriers will reduce the noise pollution. According to a high-speed rail order document released in March 2010, the project is expected to be closed to carbon neutral. A November 2011 House Transportation Committee report concluded that the government's claim that HS2 would have significant carbon reduction benefits was not justified. At best, an elected committee concluded that HS2 could do little to advance the government's carbon reduction goals. However, this will depend on rapid progress in the decarbonization of UK power plants. Archaeological discoveries Between 2018 and early 2022, HS2 surveyed more than 100 archaeological sites along the railway line. Early finds during construction were two Victorian glass jar time capsules found during the demolition of the dilapidated Temperance Camden National Hospital in 1879 and 1884. The capsules contained newspapers, hospital regulations, facilitation movement materials and official records. The Hillingdon hoard of more than 300 late Iron Age ships were discovered by archaeologists working on the railroad project in Hillingdon, West London. Archaeologists working on the railroads have previously found stone tools used by hunter-gatherers at a much early, early Mesolithic site in the East Colney Valley in the London borough of Hillingdon, evidence of what may be the earliest settlers in the area, which is now called Greater London. Before construction could begin on the new Euston station, archaeologists had to remove some 40,000 skeletons from the former tomb of St. James's Church, which was used between 1790 and 1853 and is at the site of the new station. Many skeletons can be identified from the surviving lead plagues in the coffins, including the remains of long-lost explorer Captain Matthew Flinders, who will be reburied in his hometown in Donington, Lincolnshire. The body was buried at Brookwood Cemetery, Surrey. Excavations were also underway to remove about 6,500 skeletons from the graves at the new Curzon Street station site in Birmingham. Other important finds at the cemetery include burial objects such as coins, plates, toys and necklaces, and evidence of a robbery. Excavations at Birmingham have also uncovered the world's oldest railway line. In July 2020, the archaeological team announced a series of discoveries near Wendover, Buckinghamshire. One of the most significant finds is a large circular monument of wooden columns 65 meters in diameter with features that align with the winter solstice, similar to those at Stonehenge in Wiltshire. Gold stator from the 1st century BC. BC what archaeologists say was almost certainly printed in England. Opposition. The Greens will transfer HS2 and use the money saved on the local transport network. The Brexit Party and the British Independent Party also rejected the programme. At the local government level, the 18 city councils affected by the proposed route have formed a £51 million pool that sets the cost of HS2 in millions for each constituency. Before becoming Prime Minister, Boris Johnson was personally opposed to HS2. Other former and current Conservative MPs against HS2 are Cheryl Gillan and Liam Fox. Stop HS2 was formed in 2010 to reconcile local opposition and fight HS2 across the country. In June 2020, with the Extinction Rebellion, he organized the Rebel Trail, a 125-mile protest march from Birmingham to London, stopping at camps in Warwickshire, Birminghamshire and London. Groups such as the Wildlife Fund and the National Trust opposed the project due to concerns about the destruction of local biodiversity. HS2 is a major project to create high-speed rail links between London and major cities in the Midlands and Northern England. This will cost tens of billions of pounds and aims to reduce travel times and increase capacity. Isn't it fascinating?
It is hoped that HS2 will create jobs and help the UK economy grow outside of London, but the HS2 faces delays and growing concerns about proper routing and rising costs. Thanks for staying until the end of this video. Share your thoughts or comments in the box below and see you next time. Next time. Next time.